Welcome back to Clutch Kick, and we start with an apology. You see, for the past several cars that we've reviewed, they've all been automatics. So we're going back to what Clutch Kick has always been about, which is driving pleasure and the raw manual transmission. This is a 2008 Aston Martin V Advantage with a proper six-speed manual. Although we're 11 years late to reviewing this car, that's not the point. You see, we're tired of people comparing cars on paper. Cars are so much more than that. It's about how they make you feel, the emotion that it stirs up, the drive that the company has in developing the car in the first place. All these things are important when talking about which cars are best. There are cars that are the best on paper, but leave you kind of feeling dull after driving them. This isn't one of those cars. I've been waiting to film this car for a while. We've had lots of rescheduling, so we're finally behind the wheel. I picked up the car from the owner, and he warned me that the car wasn't that exciting when you first started it up. And I could see why. So when I first started up the car, the engine wasn't particularly rev happy. It felt kind of lumpy. The steering was obnoxiously heavy. It felt like the power steering was broken. The suspension was squeaking. He said that that was really normal on this specific car when the car is cold. It just didn't feel like the car that I had envisioned as a child. He said, give it some time, let it warm up. While it was warming up, I couldn't help but notice all of its flaws. The interior hasn't aged well. It's an 11 year old car, I get it. But even when it was brand new, it wasn't a particularly nice place to be. The materials they use are quite cheap. Most of these switches and levers are from Volvo and they're not nice in a Volvo. And now you're putting it into what was a 100,000 plus car. The GVS system is also from Volvo. There are probably about five pixels on the entire screen. The materials just feel so cheap. Part of the dash isn't lined up properly anymore. Window right here whistles, I did notice when I was taking it through the car wash, I was worried they would actually leak. One of the doors don't lock properly unless you lock it manually. Everything about this car doesn't make you feel special when you're sitting in it. But when you warm this thing up, when the engine is up to temperature and you finally get it up on the freeway, instead of just cruising around in the local streets and whatnot, my God, it's a different animal. The steering becomes much better weighted. It's still heavy, which is what you want, but you don't want it excessively so, and it's weighted perfectly once it's weighted up. The steering feel is also excellent. It's very direct. There's lots of information coming through the steering. It is, of course, hydraulic, and was hydraulic all the way up until it was discontinued in 2017. The steering just makes you feel so heroic because it really feels like you're really working the car in order to make it kiss the apex properly. Now, there are a couple of other things about the driving experience that worry me a little bit. The gear lever is way too short. I feel like my arm is angled up half the time. The center console is too high. The pedal position is also garbage. I can't heel and toe to save my life. I get it, I'm not a professional racing driver, but they're not set up really well. My foot keeps getting caught under one of the pedals. The throttle pedal is also not calibrated properly. The first quarter inch of the travel doesn't actually do anything. So it makes rev matching very difficult. But again, all these things don't really matter once you actually get it onto a good road and you start flooring it. You hear the beautiful sound that the engine makes. Take a listen to this. And it just really stirs something inside of you. It gets you excited. You can't help but to smile when you're driving this car. That can't be said for a lot of modern cars that we drive. We complain a lot that modern cars have way too much technology. They have all these gadgets to help you go faster, but where does that leave you as the driver? This is the pinnacle of 21st century engineering in terms of driving feel. Every car after this has been so focused on beating the competition. But this just takes you back to when people didn't care so much about lap times. They cared about how the car made you feel. And you can't get away from the fact that this car makes you feel special. This car is all about drama and you can sense it while you're driving it. Not just from how it drives, but how it makes people around you feel. Wherever you go, everybody's looking at you and in a good way. Typically people think you're really snobby if you're driving a Ferrari or Lamborghini, but this is an Aston Martin. This is James Bond's car. It just makes everyone around you so happy and you can't put a number on that. That's not a zero to 60 time. That's not a figure you read about in a magazine. That's something bigger. 
Traditionally, the cliche is that if you win the lottery, you buy a Ferrari, you buy a Lamborghini, it's known as the poser's car, which to me is kind of disappointing because I know about Ferrari's racing history. I know that Ferrari has so much racing pedigree and technology that they put into their cars. And yet most people that drive them don't really know how to drive them and really use it for showing off. But Nassim Martin is for showing off. It shows people how beautiful car design can be. This car is now 11 years old, but it looks like it's a 2018 model. You can't tell that's an 11 year old design. It's it's aged beautifully outside. So to conclude, what makes driving special? It's the sum of all its parts. It's how direct the steering feels. It's the weight of the steering. It's the sensation of rowing through gears. And remember, when you pull on a paddle on a double clutch gearbox, every pull is exactly the same. But when you change gears, every gear has a specific feeling. It's a different feel when you're going from fourth to third compared to second to fourth or second to third. You can tell what gear you're in simply by the sensation you get from rowing it through the gears. And that's what makes driving so interesting. It's the windows down, it's the sound of machine guns lighting up when you floor this thing. It's the little things that count. When I'm taking a car out for a Sunday drive, I'm not doing it with a stopwatch in hand. I'm doing it with the windows down and determining whether this thing is making me smile or not. And that's what makes this car so special. It just makes you feel so good and so happy. That's it.